The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed, and this episode is one of our deep dives, our Bakta tank of talk. For this particular Bakta tank session, we are going to slosh around in the joy of May the 4th. We are throwing a May the 4th party. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Ken Napsack. I'm always sloshing around, and this is going to be a lot of fun to do it in the Bakta tank. Uh, Before we get sloshing, uh, we want to let you know that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash 4Center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. This week, we are recommending Brotherhood, the new Kenobi and Anakin adventure by author Mike Chen. Uh, We're going to be reading it and discussing it eventually here on 4Center. But if you would like to give it a listen, you can download your free audiobook today by going to audibletrial.com slash 4Center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash 4Center for that free audiobook. And with that... We are going to get celebrating. Over the last several years, uh, May the 4th has really become Star Wars Day. Literally, it's also called Star Wars Day. If you don't want to say the actual pun, May the 4th, (laughs) (laughs) you you can just say Star Wars Day. Uh, It is a celebration that has now become embraced uh, by Lucasfilm uh, and obviously by a ton of fans. Uh, We're going to discuss what the celebration means to us uh, and throw a little Star Wars party uh, right here on the podcast. Ken, in researching this episode, I discovered this on on Wikipedia because I I had, you know, said over the last several years. And I was like, wait, uh, by that, do I mean like a decade? (laughs) Mm, mm. How long do I mean when I say over the last several years? So I looked on Wikipedia if it had anything really about the origins. Mm. And it had this fun uh, bit of information. Uh, Wikipedia says, The phrase, uh, may the fourth be with you, dates back to at least 1979 on the day Margaret Thatcher was elected Britain's first woman prime minister. Her party took out a newspaper ad in the London Evening News that said, may the fourth be with you, Maggie. Congratulations. An entirely different (laughs) context of that pun. Uh, Obviously, in 1979, may the fourth be with you is floating. And uh, yeah, yeah, Uh, you know. You can find some people with opinions about Meg, uh, Maggie Thatcher, <laughs> Margaret Thatcher, if you look. I'm a, a fan of uh, Paul Weller and the band The Jam. Uh, they have some thoughts. I don't. Uh, I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't write a song about that use of that. Wow, that's that's quite an origin there. Yeah, that is amazing. Uh, for me, Ken, I really uh, imagine uh, not imagine it. I remember it really emerging in those mm-hmm. kind of earlier days of Twitter, where at least the way yeah. that I saw Twitter and the way I used it, it was a little bit more. Let's swap jokes, and the mm-hmm. the you know the pun was there, and it really grew into a celebration. Yeah. Yeah, that's my memory of it as well. And the fun thing is, as we have this discussion today, we've just been doing Four Center for you know, fortunate to do for so uh, long now that uh, I think our uh, our our own uh, relationship with the holiday is changing. I'm so happy to, to discuss it now than even a couple of years ago. But yeah, that's kind of where I remember it. And just looking on Twitter or Facebook or something and going, what now? Huh? <laughs> yeah, are you talking think- about Maggie Thatcher? <laughs> why are we talking about this joke from 1979 oh got it got it yeah and then uh then obviously all the companies uh become involved and really make it a thing so uh, my first question for you ken is what do you think is the value of having a star wars day and along with that is your experience affected by the fact that star wars is part of your life every day yeah this is a real this particular year, I, I think, is where I get to look back on, on my thoughts on May the 4th, even last year, years before, just inside five years. Because I used to I used to discuss here and, and, and hold to the idea of I was the, I don't need a day, I celebrate it every day. So take your little <laughs> happiness and shove it up where the sun don't shine like a Star Wars a-hole. Like I was always like, I was really against this day for a long time. And it just, you know... It, as you mentioned already, I'm such not a fan of puns. And I know you, you maybe, I don't want to speak for you, maybe share that feeling sometimes as well. I, I like wordplay. Sometimes the direct pun is not, not for no, me. Yeah. And so I just was always grumpy about it, which is not a great starting point for Star Wars celebration, of course. Um, but it's changed to the point where even I think this year, currently, right now, I'm enjoying it as a day to proclaim your love of Star Wars. 
uh, while, while social media has has made that a little bit harder over the last few years, it may be well, longer <laughs> than the last few years, but you know what I mean? We're now, now it's almost like it, it's the old, you know, it's so not punk, it's punk again type of, of thing where it, it, it is a little, uh, it, it is needed to have an excuse just to be like, I love Star Wars and this day allows me to say that. Yeah, I think that's what I've really come around to of the, yeah, I'm, I'm never a, a big fan of of puns. And it did start out as this, like, uh, that that's funny to say May the 4th because it's a pun, but then it grows into this true celebration. And um, I, I think the value of it is is certainly, you know, marketing and promotion. And it's fun to wonder yeah. what, you know, uh, shows might premiere that day, like, or, or what, you um, um, promo might come out or what fun weird merch might come out that stuff is all really fun but it's also I think a chance to build community right mm -hmm. to share jokes and hopefully affection and favorites and see what people are excited about you know right now you know that's the way I'm trying to embrace uh, when I'm thinking of this uh, May the 4th we are releasing the episode on May the 4th but are recording it ahead of time I'm kind of excited to see like what's the tone how many of these uh, tweets are going to be about excitement for Kenobi, how many there are going to be about Grogu, how many are going to be like people really sharing their favorite Padme moments, like how is it going to mm. present itself? That's really fascinating to me. Mm. And I also just think it's it's a measure of the fact that cultures change and evolve, right? Um, even when we were growing up, there was still a little bit of an expectation of, uh, okay, put the childish things away. And yeah. Uh, I think uh, other generations did it up to a point, but I think Gen X was the the big breaking point of like, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're taking our toys into adulthood. And now we're even, you and I have talked about a ton about how like we have these awkward steps and moments towards embracing our fandom as adults, whereas right. generations younger than us, it's just what you love has been a part of who you are and, and how you find people to connect with on the internet. And the fact that it's not just Star Wars Day. Star Wars isn't this one weird thing. You know, there are multiple Twin Peaks days that people celebrate. Uh, you know, the premiere of the pilot. Uh, the, we celebrate the day of Cooper arriving in Twin Peaks. Uh, Star right. Trek has First Contact Day. Uh, right. the, the day that in-universe <laughs> uh, Earthlings met Vulcans, Vulcans for the first time, and as well as yeah. many other. Uh, I was looking up Batman Day. Batman Day just started for his 75th uh, anniversary and it is the third Saturday in September. It's scheduled like Easter. It's not even a specific day. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you know, so it's just it's not it's Star Wars. We we might focus on it. It, it might make a lot of noise because Star Wars is noisy. But so mm -hmm. many fandoms, this is a way to uh, to have it be a part of our day to day life, a part of our culture. Mm. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that, and and it's. It's easy to get cynical about these kind of things. It has become such a, a day where, you know, you're, you do wonder, uh, you know, what shows or what marketing. It's not it, – I'm laughing because, like, Investor Day is becoming like a Star Wars <laughs> holiday or a Marvel holiday, which really it shouldn't, uh, but it's fun. And, and I think it's okay to celebrate things that provide any kind of fun in Star Wars. And this one is a just a huge, huge tidal wave of fun. Yeah, yeah. And and I think because of that, I'm, I'm really wanting to embrace it because uh, – over the last few years, sometimes my relationship with it is odd because I uh, get to celebrate Star Wars every day. Um, but uh, I think in the last couple of years, I've had a couple of times where like, ah, I, I, I'm too busy to celebrate Star Wars because I have Star Wars work to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is just silly because like sometimes it's like I'll see on Twitter people being like, I just decided I'm going to watch this movie or what the hell? I'm going to binge all of Mandalorian season one. And I'm like, I have to finish reading this book and I have to prepare this and I need to do like, uh, which is a silly thing to to be upset about exactly how you celebrate. I just want to find a, a way to celebrate in a way that makes me happy. Yeah, look, I mean, here we are, we're recording Force Center today, and what did I do over breakfast? I just put on Revenge of the Sith. Like, so Star Wars is always <laughs> here. And I think that can, if you're not careful, that can breed some of the, ugh, I don't need a day for it, and it's now a marketing day. And and I understand that. I, I've experienced that, as I've confessed here today. Uh, not the case this year. Whether or not uh, put some out or tweet some out, does, that doesn't really matter. But now I'm just going to be like, I'm why, why would I be upset that there's a day to celebrate this thing that I love? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And also, there, there's a ton of people who deeply love Star Wars, and uh, this day helps them make it a part of their, their day, right? Correct. Uh, so, 
I also want to be sure to ask up top here, do you ever wish that Star Wars Day was the actual anniversary of the release of Star Wars on May 25th, or is it simply time to let that go? <laughs> it is time to let it go. <laughs> Very much. I think this also factors in some of my like early, like we're talking when people were on like Friendster saying May the 4th or whatever, where I was just like, that's not the day. That's a pun. The day should be May 25th. I, I definitely maybe uh, pounded a fist on a desk a couple times for that. But I, I think I'd like that it represents a day not associated with one particular anniversary, one particular time or one particular era. Uh, we, we can celebrate that May 25th date all the time, every year. Uh, you know, we can we can absolutely look back to A New Hope and, and the other movies released on or around that time. But I just, with so many generations celebrating Star Wars now, I, I just like that there's a general date. I'll even forgive the pun. But just all the eras are represented. We're not talking about one particular movie. We're not talking about one particular entry point into Star Wars. We are celebrating the entire franchise. May 25th can be over there. May 4th is for all of us. Yeah, no, I, I think that's the the way I feel of like, uh, you know, applying Star Wars lessons to this Star Wars discussion. Like, mm. hey, yeah, if I uh, if I was like Anakin and Attack the Clones, it's like someone should just sit down and make everyone agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I got to decide, I'd be like, eh, maybe it's more elegant to have it on May 25th. Uh, sure. But I think the reason that I'm I'm wanting to let that go is like that ship has sailed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having. Uh, two different celebrations, having right. the big public May the 4th has become Star Wars Day, and then you can have a different celebrate May 25th however we want to for all those various anniversaries. There's also just something about the spirit of Star Wars of like, as a group organism <laughs> mm -hmm. that humanity can be, this just sort of organically grew out of a joke into something more real. And why resist something that organically happened? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it. Very Star Warsy. Yeah. Very Star Warsy. So moving on, letting go. What, uh, what is it that you're enjoying the most about modern Star Wars May the 4th celebrations? Is it the possibilities of nudes dropping? Is it, uh, uh the general positivity on social media? Uh, is it an excuse for yourself to buy things? What do you enjoy about the day? I, it's, this is why I can no longer be cynical about the, the day. Cause the fact that it might have turned into a marketing day, not for us, but for like for the companies, right? For Disney, Lucasfilm, mm -hmm. it's easy to be like, oh, it's like it's like people are like, I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. It's a made up holiday. Well, I just always grew up with that already existing. So I wasn't there the year someone was like, we now do Valentine's Day. I, you know, so I could uh, I, I don't want to have that approach for Star Wars here because the thing to answer your question, Justin, it's, it's the potential of uh, of trailers or news that Disney or Lucasfilm might looked this day to really drop something special for fans, whether or not we create those expectations every year, different story. But I think now I love that because it is kind of like you all kind of look to the skies for the uh, bat signal, if you will. <laughs> you look for the Kenobi uh, full trailer or a new show announcement. Again, whether or not that actually comes, whether or not that is actually more about our expectations versus anything companies have said. I just think I love that because it's a party and we're all waiting for there to be a knock at the door. <laughs> and Kenobi trailer walks in, uh, you know, Lando trailer walks in more on the acolyte. Like that's, I think now what I love more than anything. Yeah. Is Wrecker going to burst out of the cake <laughs> yeah. to yeah. announce the premiere date of bad batch season two? Yeah. I think, I think I'm with you. One of the biggest things is the news dropping. I think I stumbled a little bit when I said that uh, in question form and sounded like I was saying, do you like star Wars uh, May the 4th? Because the nudes drop. <laughs> news drops is what I was saying. I, I don't need any nudes. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the excitement of what might, uh, might, uh, be revealed that day is really, really there. Um, for me, they, it is nice to have the purchase excuse. I try to contain myself. I'm like, it's May the mm. 4th. I've been looking at this action figure for a while. It's only $15. Right. <laughs> right. Why not? Why not let the spirit of May 4th be here with me is a very nice, um, very nice thing for me. There's also like a ton of products uh, that are, even if they're not revealed, they're discounted. Um, I was looking on the, the StarWars.com website and I'll, the list of places that are going to have discounts um, is really long. And some of them are like, yeah, it's video games or books or audiobooks, Great. But then this is like a fun way to really revel in the weird and the fun side of Star Wars, just right. with some of the products that I did not know existed. 
uh, I found this set of four Star Wars uh, bars of soap uh, from a company called Dr. Squatch. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you you know the Squatch, huh? I don't use Dr. Squatch, <laughs> but they have their commercials ran on every YouTube video for like a year. So. <laughs> okay, I, I must not, for some reason, it, it bothers me that the algorithm doesn't think I use soap uh, because I've never been shown this ad. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this sounds like we're doing bad stand-up bits, but it's the other way around. They know that I need to be tricked into using soap by having like man names on it. You know, man names with your soap. Like, it's silly. It's silly. So you're in a good spot. Yes, yeah. Pay the iron price with yes. this stone soap <laughs> made of dragon gizzard. Mm. Um, yeah, but this is just, uh, it, it's amazing with the names. I'm gonna, the, the Dr. Squatch Star Wars soaps, there's a picture of Kenobi and it's called Only Hope Soap. <laughs> then there's a picture of Yoda in its wisdom wash. <laughs> and then Vader is Darth Side, Dark Side Scrub. <laughs> and finally, Maul is ruthless rinse. <laughs> yeah, there are a million jokes to make, some of them deeply inappropriate. Uh, it just I'm looking at it now. It, right. Oh, the- there, there's just a joy in the like, hey, uh, put a Star Wars on it. Like that's just always been a reality of the merchandising. And like I, I, I don't need this soap, but I want it. This has truly put a bird on it here, Portlandia at its finest. This is amazing. I'm looking at it now. I'm, I mean, look, I use Dollar Shave Club. I'm brand loyal. I don't know if I can switch to Dr. Squatch. I, I don't know here. Uh, but this is fantastic. Oh, my God. What are the choices that went in uh, with the thought process that went into these choices, Joseph? Like, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I want I want Jabba. I want Chewy. <laughs> I want Malakili. Those are the soaps I want. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When you're, you're designing Star Wars soaps, are you asking yourself, like, who would smell nice versus who really needs soap, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who needs this? Like, I'm sure Padme, you know, smells great. I'm sure Lando smells great. Like, the kind of yeah. characters who, who are, like, oh, portrayed yeah. as taking care of their bodies versus, like, yeah. does Han have a natural musk? Is that part of his solo luck that he just smells good or... <laughs> Always, always sound that smells like he just ran to get there. Yeah, uh, you know, the, does the Vader soap come with like a Vinay reaching broom, to, like <laughs> like reaching stick? Like, what do we got here? Yeah, this is yeah. The, yeah, does uh, Maul dab some cologne on his neck? He's like, I'm about to meet those Jedi. I'm about to uh, fight those two Jedi. I'm going to make sure I uh, smell intimidating. Do I smell like <laughs> spider? Because yeah, I've been in, down in the drink a while. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm sure a Lotho Minor soap was definitely needed. I mean, that was part of the magic that Mother Talzin did is get rid of the smell. And then, yeah. oh God, sorry, we could do bad stand-up bits. Uh, years are killing here, but just the fact that it's, this is licensed, which means at some point, the st- someone in the story group gets this on their desk, <laughs> and Matt Martin is up there going, "Man, yeah, ruthless rents." That that checks out. That's good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he'd he'd be ruthless. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, and I, last thing, I just I, they come in a little display case. At least uh, this image does with all four of those characters: Obi Wan, Yoda, Vader, and Maul with lightsabers out. <laughs> looks like they just pose with like the heroes and villains of the star wars galaxy say wash your bleeping body <laughs> and again not designed for five-year-olds <laughs> this no. soap is for adults no so that's the kind of stuff that i yes. love on may the 4th it's just utter utter spirit of fun and celebration right that's the best. Oh, my God. And, yes, I'm uh, considering uh, adding this to card. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, this might be an, an old card ad on on actual May the 4th when we get there. Uh, so I wanted to ask you about this. How would you feel if, like, parts of society embraced it as a, as a true holiday? You know, take the mm-hmm. day off, specific foods. Uh, it, it, you know, if it was expected uh, that you and your Star Wars-loving partner would exchange gifts. <laughs> on this yeah. day is for you is that like you know we're in this very interesting place to me where like i was saying uh, i think pop culture is becoming a, a, a more of a part of h- how we interact with other people and, and tell them you know who we are what we like and it, it can be pop culture or sometimes it could be more like a style of, of film yeah. right people can be like i'm a real horror fan right but yeah. uh, in, enjoying a kind of storytelling can be a part of our identity uh, but do you like that still being like that's still a little to the side of, you know, Arbor Day <laughs> or, yeah. or 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 probably, you know, a more spiritual holiday? 
Look, I'm fine with it overall, I, but I think it would need to be Life Day. I think we should just go in on Life Day and transition mm. a lot of things over to there. But, you know, May the 4th has the, uh, ah, shall we say, purchasing power behind it. It has uh, become that uh, thing as we just were talking about Star Wars soap for uh, five minutes. So I I, I, I think it. some people might say it's more real than a Valentine's Day, right? Which um, I always just say, hey, whatever. It's a day to celebrate the concept of love. That ain't half bad. Let's just roll with no. it. If that means we order in a pizza shaped like a heart, great. Uh, I'm good <laughs> with that. Um, but uh, we, you know, you put as much as you want into it. So I, 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 I'm good with this. It, it's already seeming to be that in so many minds. But you're talking about days off from work, a paid holiday. Sure, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, that would that would open up the floodgates, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Talk about Star Wars versus Star Trek. When people are like, okay, well, fine. Then first contact day is my day. I'm not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I would be intrigued by that. And it, to me, it would be a fun way. I, I think I want to keep it. Your Valentine's Day comparison is really great, right? That is a holiday that is, you know, causes some consternation. Absolutely kind of the starting place of what is now the sort of joke structure of the, they just made up this holiday to sell X. Yeah. Um, but it is something that some people choose to embrace. Like you probably aren't going to be able to say like, I'm so sorry, uh, I must take Valentine's Day off, right? <laughs> right. Uh, and just have that be like, of course. Uh, but then people choose to uh, celebrate it in the evening. Uh, uh, my wife and I usually celebrate it exactly the way you described with a heart-shaped pizza. Mm. So if on Star Wars Day, we could always celebrate with a BB-8-shaped pizza. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Which would be great. That's just a large pizza and a small pizza on top of one another. <laughs> just meld it together. Uh Love Just that. meld those pizzas together. And I love what you're saying about Life Day. That makes uh, even more sense to me. Mm. Now, people can choose to celebrate Star Wars Day and Life Day however they want. Um, but yeah, Life Day is the one that's already kind of set up in Star mm. Wars as a, a, is a, a, a spiritual holiday. Uh, yeah. so that would be interesting to lean into that of like, uh, you know, who are you going to help on Star Wars or on Life Day? Yeah. How are you going to celebrate the light on Life Day? Absolutely. You got to sing the song. You got to you got to play Carrie Fisher's rendition of it and sing along. I think it'd be great. Yeah. Wear big red robes. I'd do that. It'd be lovely. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> hey, wear a slanket. Yeah, I'd love it. Uh, how would you celebrate uh, uh, Star Wars Day if it was embraced a little bit more as uh, is a holiday or if you just decided in our household it's a it's a holiday what kind of traditions would you want there to be i so what i would do is uh watching one movie from every uh trilogy Ooh. uh it's solo rogue one they're their own things you can choose to watch those if you want but i think from the trilogies until more um, choices are out there i think that's what i would do again you're asking me i'm not i shouldn't worry about what others would do uh lightsaber duels in the backyard fortunate to have a, a backyard with some swinging room <laughs> So I think we uh, maybe have some fun saber fights. And then an, uh, the, there was actually a, my computer autocorrected. Uh, uh, it said, find the port, which means apparently we're going to search for some port wine. But I uh, find the porg. You get little toy uh, porgs that can crack open with toys and treats inside. Hide them in the backyard and you got a porg hunt. That's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I I really like pork hunting or port hunting. Yeah, like yeah. you find any port in the storm on Star Wars Day. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, I think if I was just going to be like, okay, uh ask my wife like, "Hey, are you okay if we really observe this?" We have some years like there was one year that we uh rewatched the sequel trilogy and we set it up so that we would be um finishing watching uh Rise of Skywalker on May the 4th and uh, a friend had mm-hmm. very kindly gifted me uh, some wine from the Skywalker ranch mm. uh, and you've been holding on for that for a special day. So we, you know, made the choice to open it. So that was just like, yeah, I think a lot of people do that. Of like, what, what are we going to watch? Yeah. But if I was talking to my wife and like, you know, no, I leave, <laughs> leave work early. <laughs> you got to get here for sunset. We're going to have some special star Wars cocktails. Uh, the, yeah. uh, my wife has devised a couple of those. Mm. Um, but if I was going to try to do something that was, um, Maybe a little bit more trying to get into the uh, the themes of Star Wars, which we celebrate mm. so much. We're like we love the fun. We're joking about the the soap for half the episode. Um, <laughs> but there's something about uh, I, I like the idea of like writing a hope down. Maybe even a hope about something that you're really struggling with Ooh, yeah. to just remind yourself that hope is a possibility. And then I looked it up to verify they exist. Uh, I don't know they're officially licensed, but you can get uh, lighters that are uh, lightsaber hilts. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> so write down a hope and burn it with a lightsaber lighter. Mm, that's beautiful. 
Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that. They, they got that cool thing at uh, Galaxy's Edge, right? They got like a tree or something like a wish yeah. tree or something like that. That's 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 great. I think you could go uh, put that in your own uh, backyard or in your patio, your 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 balcony, whatever you got. That's great. Yeah, I think uh, I think at this point in our world right now, uh, all times, but right now, anything you can do to reconnect with hope is uh, is welcome. <laughs> Well, that's just great and touching. I'll be in the backyard swinging plastic swords looking for poor gags, <laughs> but uh, both are valid. That was my hope that you would have a, a good uh, a good pork search. <laughs> and on that note, uh, unless you have any other uh, thoughts, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, let, let me go place the pork toys in the backyard. We'll be back. Okay, <laughs> I'll order the lightsaber lighter and we will be back. And we are back. We discussed a little bit how we uh, process Star Wars Day, how we celebrate it in the real world, other ways we might celebrate it in the future in the real world. Uh, but I feel like the the true spirit of Star Wars Day is just celebrating however a, a fan wants to. So for fun, we're going to imagine throwing a party in the Star Wars galaxy. Ken, if you lived in the Star Wars galaxy, what planet or space station or other place, Mortis, uh, where would you host your Star Wars Day party? Ooh, Mortis, that'd be a weird party location. <laughs> I, I kind of uh, love that. So uh, what we're doing is we're con- converting a, a cruiser or a ship into a party bus. N- less stressful than Dryden Voss is the first light, all right? Uh, floating, uh, kind of a floating party in the sky, which is uh, a, a, kind of a, a reference to a, a beat in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in that series, the, the party mm. that never ends. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's where I would start. I, I Just because I love the idea. It's a big enough galaxy. We'll go to you. You don't have to come to us. What kind of cruiser are, are you thinking about? Are you thinking about like something like a uh, Falcon sized? Or are you thinking like a uh, Mon Calamari cruiser with the, uh, <laughs> the moisture yeah. way high? It's funny. I think it would start like a Falcon size, but then within five years, we'd have to rent a Mount Mon Calamari cruiser. Uh, and the first light's a great example, which, by the way, I still love the concept that, you know, they, don't worry, Dryden will take his traveling party of doom to you. Uh, it's something I do like about that. I was kind of thinking, might even a good mid-sized ship like a Blockade Runner, uh, like a Tanaviv 9, uh, uh, we'll just grab one of the later models and just make it into a traveling party bus. No, I, I really like that because obviously uh, the corridors turn in the Tantive 3 and 4, we get to see that. But I feel like the general shape of it, at some point, you're going to get railroaded into a big hallway, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, not- yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're at the party and you're trying to go to the bathroom and you're stuck in the hallway with people, <laughs> I'll go, oh, hey, I didn't know you were here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a perfect ship to line up in the bathroom. Half the party is the line to the bathrooms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the refreshers. Yeah, I think, oh, I was tempted by a lot of places, uh, but this is the weird space I went into. Uh, it's just a, a place I want to spend time in, and I think it's really conducive to a party. I would want to throw my party in the Jedi Council room. Oh, yeah, I like that. High above? Okay. High above. You know, it, it feels like in event space, uh, there is a uh, hotel that has like a kind of circular event space on like the 14th floor or whatever in, in downtown Minneapolis that Sarah mm. and I looked at for our wedding. It wasn't quite right, but it was that very circular energy. Uh, and I've talked about this before. I just, I love uh, circular energy in general, but I particularly love it for a party. Um I have enjoyed many parties at various, you know, apartments or uh, in your version, like a space cruiser where there's like lots of nooks and crannies or that thing that always happens at a party where like uh, everybody is supposed to be in the main room, but interesting conversations happen in the kitchen and pretty soon the entire party is (laughs) in the kitchen. (laughs) No one can get to anything and the rest of the rooms are entirely deserted. I love the, the nooks and crannies party, but there's something about, the the circle where you can mm-hmm. kind of see everything that's going on. You're in a special place. You're high up. You're you're looking out at the city. There's something about that that seems really fun uh, for me. I would take out the chairs. I'm assuming the Jedi are okay with this. Uh, mm. I, I would, t- and if the Empire's there, I'm kicking them out. Um, yeah. But I'd, I'd take out the chairs. There'd maybe be like a little uh, stage, a little uh, you know theater in the round platform in the middle of the room, and there'd maybe be like little cocktail tables. Uh, not sit down, but stand up to keep the energy alive in the party. Because if, mm-hmm. if you can mm-hmm. sit down too much, there goes your party. Yep. Um, a couple seats for people who need to sit down. Yep. But like cocktail tables line in the whole circle. 
And, and I think you'd have a, a really good party flow. This is wonderful. Also, this has the kind of work party vibe where you uh, suddenly Friday five o'clock hits and then it's the holiday party and you're <laughs> at your work desk, but you're drinking uh, which you might be doing anyways, but you know what I mean? So it'd be, it'd be great to see like Opal Rensis and your old poof just being like, Oh, they did. I like they, Oh, they put up some streamers. This is great. Like I like that kind of vibe. I like that energy there. Yeah. Yeah. The Padawans did a great job decorating. <laughs> oh, of yeah, ab- absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. what would the entertainment at your uh, party cruiser <laughs> bus be like? Would you hire yeah. stuff out? Would you have a talent show? What would the entertainment for your Star Wars day party yeah. be? You are right. There's a danger of, you know, creating too much interest in the side rooms. You want to have a main room. And, and I don't really understand. And I love your, your circle example. It's a great um, understanding of the energy of parties there. I'm not a party planner in that way. So I would need to hire a Garza whip. I'm looking at her. I'm looking at what she did with the sanctuary. And this is a, you know, we, we, this is a, we're not worried about canon timelines and what happens to these characters. I would hire Garza whip. I think she would set up the right party. She would know who to bring in to set up this party, to organize it. She'd be a spectacular host. Uh, even if some people, you know, every once in a while someone shows up at your party that wasn't invited, they were a plus one, they were a clerical heir. They show up, she knows handle, how to handle that just fine. As far as entertainment, I don't need, I'm, I'm pretty simple. Uh, you know, other than Porg hunts and lightsaber fights, I, I just kind of want Max and Figure and Dan leading the music and just playing some music not dominating, just knowing when to stop, right? Max Rebo and Finger didn't know how to stop if there's problems going on. She knows how to get the music going. Play it, uh, hit it, Max. Uh, this is what I want. And then I'll take a little bit of the Outlander Club vibe. I do love a bar party. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I've been several years where I've like, hey, birthday uh, down at the Foreman's on Riverside. Come on down. I do like that. So the Outlander Club, you have a little bit of a sports book vibe and then a uh, Dave and Buster's video game vibe when you, you instead of just watching the games, you may be playing the games and I can, I can live in that world. I've got to organize all of that. You, that is such a great pick. And I think that might be the best answer is um, I'm changing my answer from when I wrote down. I'm like, <laughs> I, I would ask R2 to DJ. <laughs> I don't think that's bad at all. R2 has, because you're right, in some ways that's the best of you, you You have somebody who's either live or DJing who really knows how to read the room and help control the energy of the party, help guide the energy. <laughs> control, yes. it's maybe not a good word. I will control this party. Control. Uh, but make sure that it's bouncy, it's fun, that the music is loud enough, but not too loud, that it stops or or peaks at the right moments uh, mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. you know, let, let somebody uh, say something. Um so I would have, and it would just be fun to be R2, like, you are so resourceful, you have you have so many skills, your yeah. body is full of mysteries, <laughs> with how many tools you can fit in there. Do you, do you have, like, a, a whole vinyl record case in there, R2? I think you do. I think you do. Um, I love this. Yeah. And then I, maybe if there was, like, just a special presentation, not the whole night, uh, mm. but I, I have to lean into my obsessions, uh, I would want a stripped down performance, a live performance that is just Lulilo Primak backed by that astromech drummer Mm. (laughs) from the sanctuary. That is amazing. Absolutely. Just some like, yep. Oh, that'd be great. Just voice and rhythm. So beautiful. So stripped down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I had to, to cross the line that we always wonder about of, do we ever want to see actual stand up comedy? in star wars right um yeah yep yep uh we we get close by seeing the the circus and the the gamorian clown which suggests that the clown is going to come out there and do some some bits uh it's probably a little bit more uh cirque du soleil (laughs) clowning then i don't think that Gamorian guard's going to be like uh, you know talking about you know why the ronto crossed the road that kind of thing but I would be very curious to have a stand-up that spoke in their own language that not a lot of people knew. Like, I would hire a, a, a Kubas comedian like Garandin. <laughs> just, just see if the rhythms translate. Like, okay, it's clear. Clea Garandin just, uh, just went for the joke. Uh, but did it land? None of us know. None of us know. Oh, that's great. Yeah. This is all great. Would you do a, First, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go would I do it. a set? No. Would I, would I do a set? No. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Would you hire anyone to do a set? Uh, dangerous. I think comedy at parties is such a bad, oh, it can, it can be a bad thing. You know, and a I, lot of, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure you as a performer, Joseph, every once in a while you get that offer 
hey, I've got a, I got a party. Do you mind if I pay you to do some stand up? Oh no, it's a bad mix. It's a bad no. Mix. I got I got to that point. I you know when I was in Minneapolis, uh, I did a lot of different kinds of uh, theater and performance and writing, and that and I got hired to do many things. And it would be a difficult conversation because sometimes event planners wouldn't understand it. But I'd be like, okay, my first question is, do the people there know that there's going to be a performance? And people would be like, no, it's a treat. And I'd be like, then no. <laughs> there needs to be a designated space. People need to opt in because, yes, there is nothing worse than like everybody here is having a great time talking to one another. Stop the fun you're having with the perfectly great normal human being jokes you're making to one another. For my polished set, it's oh, it's death. It's horrible. Uh, it's not my story to tell, but Mark Ellis will tell the tale of the time and early in his career he got hired for a teenager's birthday party at like a Friday's, and he performed <laughs> at the edge of a bunch of tables put together in a work and restaurant. It was probably the worst gig he's ever experienced. So yes. it happens. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, comedy boy. should never be a surprise. <laughs> should never. So to that to that end, no. Uh, but I want to. I I think you're so right about R2 as a DJ shows. A lot of people might go to Rex, uh, who uh, right uh, right who is at Galaxy's Edge. This is a uh, close to a very real world complaint I have about Galaxy's Edge, which is this wonderful place. Can't wait to get back. I do not like going into that restaurant and having Rex's music pounded me upside the head. Where I couldn't even think or concentrate on my <laughs> Wookie cookie drink or whatever the heck I was having at 1030 in the morning where I was drinking alcohol way before I normally do trying to celebrate Star Wars. And it's a great vibe. And there's video. I tried to dance. It was so loud. I couldn't hear any thoughts. So we need to find that balance. I think R2. All due respect to Rex. I think R2. Fine. Yeah. I, I, I wonder uh, who who cranked. Who, why? What made Rex crank it up that day? Because the music was nice and balanced uh, when I went there in the. <laughs> Uh, 1 p.m. or whatever uh but yeah, uh, yeah. no good good uh, point yeah mm. uh so who in the star wars galaxy would you really want to attend we, we've answered lots of questions like this about who would you take a road trip with and who's the funniest who would mm -hmm, be the best mm -hmm. you know uh comedian and all that who do you want to live with but for a party and you yeah. need this party to succeed right you're throwing it you want mm -hmm. people who are going to help you have a good party who is on your list yeah, it, it to me it is all about you know the balance of guests, right? And and you're right, there might be some hey, this person can make some food, make a drink, and everything. But you know, we're putting together that party. You, you do kind of keep in mind of this this kind of energy, that kind of energy, and yes, you invite your friends. So this is a tough list, Joseph, and I, we might have some crossover here. I have I have a a list that begins with Boss Nass. Um, <laughs> Boss Nass, and it's usually me three drinks in. Is the get over here, look at you guy at the party. Yep. And I want, and, blah, 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 and he's just going to, oh, we're all bomb bad generals here. Like, I want that energy. I need that energy. Um, and then by that, I, I also kind of want Dexter there because it's Dexter Jets. There's the same kind of, this kind of big, uh, big room taking up uh, space occupying energy, right? But he's mm -hmm. the quieter version. He's a little more focused version. So while Boss Nass is going around the party, slapping people on the back, going, look at all Dexter's sitting at a table going, oh, it's good to see you again. Oh, what you been up to? And he's like, he's got that warm kind of energy in the corner of the party. All right. So that's nice. it so far. Yeah. No, uh, very good. I'm going to, I'm not saying much about this one. Cause I, I have a feeling you might uh, say more. Uh, I do want Obi-Wan Kenobi there. <laughs> I do want a professional drinker. We need to have him there in the corner. Uh, plus if anyone starts trying to deal drugs, he can take care of that. Um, I want the Mon Calamari clapping and dancing on Endor. That's just in the background. <laughs> I need that guy, which then, which I need all the Ewoks. That's dangerous, but I do need all the Ewoks. I need two drinks chewy from the first night. <laughs> and then I do kind of want the code breaker. I don't know if he's the best at parties, but I do mm. want him because I do like having some games maybe. And then the final one here um, is Claude because <laughs> that's just the Claude's here kind of guy. And also he's, Probably, well, he would find a way to eat the appetizers, but he's not going to, you know, he's not going to make a mess. Well, another thing about it, he'll make more of a mess when he has to reach down and, and, and use his mouth to get the appetizers. But I do want Claude there because everyone just like, look, Claude's here. He's the guy. And and, and he'll, he's the one that shows up with the, did you need two bags of ice? And, and he's that guy. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I really like that. This is a great list. Um, yeah, we, do, we have some overlap for sure. Um, Kenobi is definitely on the list. Uh, Kenobi is yeah, a, a professional chatter, right? Like yes. he is going to be able to engage anybody. He's going to be the one who makes, you know, people who aren't sure what to talk about. He's going to, he's going to bring up some conversation. He's, he's going to ask lots of questions and he's going to share some opinions that are going to be charming, but a little volatile and get the conversation going, you know? Yeah. Um, also want Leia there, right? Because Ooh, yeah. Leia uh, deserves a good party. <laughs> uh, yes. She is intuitive. She will sense uh, what the party needs, right? Uh, she could, she can hold like really fun, in-depth, serious conversations if it gets serious, but she can also joke around and have fun. So definitely yeah. uh, Leia Organa. Um, look, one of the things that I love about the Jedi Master Yoda is he he wants to just have fun. He he's he knows that the light side is about having a sense of mirth, asking weird, challenging questions, and then giggling. <laughs> yeah. No, he's gonna be the one if something knocks over, he'll be like, "It's fine. It's the you know, all Ooh, things are natural in the force." <laughs> yep, yep. No reason to cry over spilled alcohol, spilled mm -hmm. flaming alcohol. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. I can use the force to put that bottle of broken tonneray back together, and there won't be a even a bit of glass floating in there Good so indeed. definitely a, a yeah. mirthful yoda okay mirthful yoda indeed yeah and then um i i i, I had some i have some deeper cuts but I, I, my mind mm. goes to some of the big characters lando come on uh, yeah. just mm -hmm. absolute charm fest right you mm -hmm. absolutely uh need that huge just burst of charm mm -hmm. um I think my answer to your great uh, thoughts of Boss Nass and Dexter of, yeah, you need the the big loud person who maybe is the one who shouts that the party should move to a second location at about 1 a.m., you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> the let's all go to Denny's, let's all go to Vegas, you know, mm -hmm. uh, look at this ill-advised drink that I concocted, everybody watch me drink it, the, you know. <laughs> totally. You know, yeah. So uh, I think that person for me might be Grief Karga. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a big win. Yeah. Imagine everybody walking in the door in grief, yelling what how everybody feels about them. <laughs> <laughs> They're all not excited you're here. <laughs> they all remember what you did last party, yeah. Lando. Yeah. You know? Hey, you weren't invited. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Grief Karga is the kind of person when he doesn't remember a person's name, says, there they are. <laughs> 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 There's my buddy. Like, you don't remember my name, do you, Grief? No, but I like you. Look at this slugger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a champ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, this is dangerous. Uh, mm. But you know who I think would be fun at a party? Not everyone there would, would like him, mm. but they'd have to admit that he's interesting. Watto. Yeah, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Every party's got to have the villain, I guess. It's, yeah, I you know, mean... I feel a little bad about it, but like, look, he's, he, his little scene in Attack of the Clones is so charming, it is. you know, it when is. he, he sees Anakin's all grown up, he's like, oh, with uh, the hand and everything. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He fit that energy. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, final person for me, and this is just my own fun, is Mace Windu. <laughs> wow. Wow. Mm. Yeah. To just see if he is, mm. uh, if he's capable of loosening yeah. up. Or if he's the person, sometimes that makes a party fun. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I remember some parties where like there was there was a party I was at once where um, somebody asked a, a person what kind of music they like. And the person just said, I don't like music. And everybody's laughed. <laughs> and they're like, no, I'm just it's not really for me. <laughs> it was like music. Yeah. All of me. OK. Just, just music <laughs> in general. <laughs> and I, I yeah, that would be great to find out. Like Mace is like, well. Uh, I, I don't enjoy drinking and people would be like, Oh, that's okay. No problem. Yeah. You can have a non-alcoholic drink. He's like, no, I don't, I don't like the sensation of taking in fluid and like, just <laughs> weird crap like that. You also have the Charles from swingers vibe of his yeah, place is dead anyway. And like <laughs> wanted to move it down the line. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. Mm. So we, 
we got a great cast of characters here at our Star Wars Day party. Would you lay any rules down? You know, no blasters, no droids, no Jedi, uh, no no using the Force. Any any hard and fast party rules that you would lay out there? I'm good with the blasters being locked up. It is the Star Wars galaxy after all. So, uh, you know, having a uh, um, uh, tote rod downstairs at the coat rack <laughs> taking your blasters isn't a bad idea for me. All droids definitely welcome here. Even L3. She might be an interesting energy at the party, but I do, I do want her there. I, I I do want Jedi there. You got Mace. I, I said Obi Wan earlier, um, but I also there's the idea of like maybe the Jedi's that break the rules or push the boundaries. Qui Gon doesn't seem like a great party guy, but I do that vibe. Uh, Dooku, I, Dooku, by the way, great at parties. This I absolutely <laughs> believe. So this is the kind of Jedi I would want. But Mirthful Yoda, that probably is the best example of the kind of Jedi I'd want there. Yeah, no, I mean Quinlan Voss, he can have fun, right? Yes. Oh, that's a dangerous invite. Yeah, and, and, and like the bet, like oh, we ended up on the roof. Oh no, <laughs> there's no roof you, access. You know, I I realized uh, who who we didn't examine on our list is is Bad Batch. Uh, do you want Wrecker, or is it too big of a risk? Uh, yes, no, I do want Wrecker there. I want all of them there. <laughs> I want all of them there because yeah. Tech is in the corner, like just looking at the LPs and running down the list of what you got. You know, yeah, uh, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Wrecker's like, you got darts. Yeah. Oh, you know, you know, this is, I, I swear I'll move on from this question, but now I have in my mind, now that I'm thinking of Bad Batch, I want to see a conversation between Tech and Asajj Ventress. <laughs> I don't know why that mm. amuses me. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> tech trying to tell Asajj Ventress uh, very technical details and, and her uh, not super being into it seems like a fun party scene. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Oh, this, yeah, we can't, you know, you know, speaking of, you need to have Chopper at the party. <laughs> Well, that was going to, Chopper's one of my rules. Oh, it is one of your rules? Oh, oh no. Yeah, because I realized, uh, I think I would have two rules. Uh, one would be uh, no red wine <laughs> or whatever the Star Wars equivalent is. Uh, this is something that comes from uh, my wife working at many mansions over the years uh, where people, you know, th that they're historically designated. So they're wonderful, beautiful places to be, but also like a part of the job is to use the space so they stay alive, but a part of the job is preservation. And a lot of times people get upset at the like, absolutely wine, white wine. <laughs> mm, yeah. You're not going to stay in our beautiful historic floor. And I feel like if I was having the party in the Jedi council room, I'd have to have a, you know, no yes, red sir. wine. Um, yes, I can live with that. And then that led me to like, look, I want to have a really responsible party. Uh, so I think my bouncer type would be chopper who would, <laughs> take care of it if there was a problem. I think if somebody had a little too much, he would take their space keys and Chopper mm -hmm. would take you home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I agree with this 100%. My worry is that Chopper would, you turn around and Chopper would be drinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, this, yeah. I would have to research, is it possible for, yeah. well, I don't know, R2 gets, uh, gets pretty weird when he gets that uh, the yeah. whole oil thing in the yeah. uh, Clone Wars. So, yeah, you're right. There's a flaw in my beautiful plan. I, I, I don't know if it's a flaw. It's not a flaw. It's just a, something you have to be wary of. This is why I would I would recommend Black or Santin because well, then again, he's not <laughs> above getting drunk too. But I think he, you if you can't paid, send a Trandoshan home with him. That's true. That's true. I think if he was paid for, he'd be a great doorman. Yeah, yeah. But there is a real risk of my designated droid is uh, off in the corner, you know, uh, yeah. zapping people like, mm. OK, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I'll make tech yeah. <laughs> my bouncer. I like that. Uh, any other rules for you? Um, no, no. I'm just starting to think of more guests. So we're going to move on. I'm going to force myself yeah. to Pelimoto. Uh, Pelimoto might be a good party. Oh, for, oh man. I, oh, I, I, so I, many. I, oh, the, the pit droids on the dance floor. Mm. Come on busting their little moves um what would you serve do you have any like food and drink in the star wars galaxy that you're like that that's great for the party i'm look i'm very simple you've actually been to some of my parties joseph i'm like i don't know i got some candy you bring what you want a wendy <laughs> lee always brings tacos and that's the greatest thing ever occasionally i'll get drunk and order pizza so i'm pretty simple but if i'm throwing this in the star wars galaxy i want a snack from every planet and is that a lot of snacks mm. yes it is but one Regional snack from every planet, so all snacks are represented. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. Uh, I kind of went the same direction of that. We talk uh, about the metaphorical Star Wars buffet, that Star Wars is many things, and you can take what you like and leave what you don't. Uh, I would want a literal Star Wars buffet. Uh, I would want there to be some shack roast. Uh, I definitely want there to be some 
a vegan imitation shack roast. Uh, I want there to be some jogan fruit, just a few of my favorite uh, Star Wars foods. And then, uh, man, that jet juice at uh, at Galaxy's Edge is, is real good. So I'd want the jet juice to be flowing. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I did yeah. not try that. Um, probably because I couldn't hear the waiter with the options. Uh, thank you, Rex. <laughs> thank you, Rex. Uh, yeah. I'm learning so much about your trip to Galaxy's mm. Edge. Yeah. Uh, would you have any special activities or uh, rituals is the way I phrased it, but that's weird. Would you have, uh, would you want there to be any structure to the party or would you really want it to be a party of just like, everybody shows up for Star Wars Day, there's food, there's drink, there's merriment, there's some music, or would you want there to be something else? That is that is my kind of vibe. That's what I look for in parties. You know, a Dothraki, Dothraki wedding with less than three deaths is considered a dull affair. I don't need that on my <laughs> property or my ship here. I Yes, just go with where, where your heart wants to take you. It might have something set up, you know, some darts, some lawn jarts or something like that. Sure. But I, I find that most people just love to connect, hang around, maybe have a snack, maybe have a drink. So that's the kind of vibe I want. Nothing that will uh, lead the party in any specific direction. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, I do like having a, a little something like um, I've had plenty of really great parties that are just like everybody show up and uh, talk. And, and it's really fun to watch the the natural ebb and flow of a party when you get like the the first mm. two people there and you have like this quality time for half an hour because they're the only couple that shows up on the dot. Yes. And then one more person uh, shows up and then another. And then pretty soon it's just like it just goes by in a blur because it's just this, you know, a really great big party like that. Uh, mm. I've loved those. I've also been involved in like uh, some various uh, parties that have a little bit more something to them like you know uh, a pre-wedding party where you you kind of it's mm. mostly just to relax and get to know each other but there is like toasts yeah okay and i think because it's star wars day right there'd be one thing if it's just like it's tech's birthday mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's uh it's pelimoto's work anniversary and we're throwing her a party uh maybe that actually would uh, be conducive to this as well i think because it's star wars day I've got my little uh, circular stage in the middle of the Jedi Council room. Mm -hmm. I would have a sign-up sheet for toasts. Okay. For people to, like, stand up, raise a glass, and say what Star Wars Day means to them. And I would have, uh, it would be like uh, a stand-up. You'd get the light. (laughs) Yes. Oh, yes. You you can't go over, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. three galactic standard minutes. um, And you have to sign up, right? So so you know who's coming. So you don't have the awkward... All right, it's toast time. Does anybody want to give a toast? And nobody mm. comes forward. None of that. You sign up. I love that idea. I also would love to see a light at weddings for wedding speeches too. But that's just uh, <laughs> that's just me. Uh, no, this is great. No, especially for Star Wars Day, and, and it's fitting for the Jedi Council Chambers. The, the, this is what you'd want. Someone, some some poignant moments. Yeah, yeah. A glass raised, uh, perhaps with the Force, as the mm. the lights of course on twinkle below, and we think about what Star Wars Day really means. Uh, well, Chopper is throwing up oil in the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were supposed to keep everyone out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, final question here about the party, Ken. Uh, let's imagine it was a very successful party, uh, but you are feeling a, a little wrecked the next day. Perhaps there is a, nothing was broken or destroyed, but there's a mess to be cleaned up. Your cruiser is not in the greatest shape. Who in all the galaxy do you want there by your side to help you with party cleanup? I mean, I tried, I wanted to give them the day off. I didn't think it was fair, but I also think they're the best and you got to recognize the best. And that is uh, simply oh, peep it. <laughs> and, and by the way, I, <sighs> Aunt Z would be a great party guest. Kaz would be a great party guest. Ugh. We're gonna, we're just going to really just include every character at the end of the day here. But oh, peep it. I, again, I think oh, peep it deserves a day off and deserves, deserves some rest and relaxation. I also think oh, peep it gets a lot of joy and sense of purpose out of cleaning. I think uh, Opipa does uh, does the job well and and and, and feels it. So I I, I would um, I would have uh, Opipa on retainer. Yeah, uh, I definitely would include Opipa, and I would give this chance for Protocol Droid C three PO to shine as well. Mm. That he could. Uh, he's maybe not personally picking it up, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but he knows where everything goes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he could also, you know, help uh, any any needs that anybody has, uh, you know, maybe mm-hmm. some Alka-Seltzer. 3PO would be on that. So I think between them, Opipit doing the real hard work for extremely high pay 
I would pay the hell out of Opeepit. And then 3PO, you know, so often he's thrown into chaos. Give him a chance to restore order. Oh, yeah. Look, you and I had uh, both had a lot of joy watching that Clone Wars episode where C-3PO was planning the party for Padme. (laughs) Exactly. So, yes, I think he would have a lot of fun cleaning up, too. He gets to do uh, what he truly was born to do. What a great way to celebrate Star Wars Day. Any final thoughts on Star Wars Day? Either the fictional party ones we've had fun making up or the real one here in our real world. No, this is a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, sir, for putting together these list of questions because as, as deep as we love to dive on on uh, Force Center here, I'm still still not happy with my list of party goers and I'm going to have this going in my brain for a long time. Pop loop. Ah, he'd still all the beer. Uh, so this has been a lot of fun as far as actual star Wars day. Yes. Let's uh, celebrate the spirit, not necessarily how we got here. Commercialism, all those kind of things. We can debate those on other times and we can look at them and say, yep, that's what that is. But this is a day to love star Wars and there ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I think that's my final thought is often our discussions of Star Wars Day over the years here on Four Center, you know, we, we've talked about where it came from. We've talked about the pun. We've talked about how it's changed. And I think I put together these questions and thinking about it, it was just like a good reminder of like, hey, um, I get to choose if I celebrate, which I will. And I get uh, to choose how I celebrate. Uh, it's just that great reminder that, you know, we don't uh, have control over the the whole thing. Nobody can <laughs> wave their hand and say, this is the way we're celebrating Star Wars Day. Uh, but we still have our choice as individuals, which means we can impact it, right? If I want it to be a celebration, I can be sure to tweet something celebratory and I can be a part of what I want it to be. And just that reminder that, you know, Star Wars Day grew organically uh, mm-hmm. at first because fans we're talking about it so it doesn't just happen it it can really be what we make it absolutely well said sir excellent so with that ken do you want to let no people know where they can find us yes absolutely we are the four center podcast feed we're on twitter at four center pod share us your list of star wars party guests and the reasons why i'm looking for threads all right we can also be found on instagram and youtube as well facebook page is four center podcast you can find us on a lot of spots including Acast, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and more. Just search, you'll find us. Merch is available at tpublic.com slash user slash Force Center, and you can support directly at patreon.com slash Force Center. I want to let you know that at Star Wars Celebration on Thursday, 2 p.m., we, uh, Joseph and I, will be guests on Star Wars Explained. That's Alex and Molly Damon's uh, show on the podcast stage. Going to be a lot of fun. Uh, doesn't look like Jennifer's going to be able to get to that event, uh, but she will be at Star Wars Celebration doing some wonderful, other wonderful things. We'll update you if that changes uh you can follow me at ken knapsack or go to my website ken knapsack.com for more joseph what about you yeah you can find me on social media twitter instagram tiktok is at joseph scrimshaw and of course you can always go to my website joseph scrimshaw.com for more comedy adventures but for now for myself for ken for oh peep it this has been force center <laughs> <laughs>